poetry. A single poet reads, strips words off pages, entertains educated earlobes in a darkened room. Her words perform focused like thespians, minus the monotones of most. But is anyone listening, or would they, had she been older, grayer, wiser, less flattering in figure, less flexible with fingers, had roadmaps sketched on her face and legs. Some smile, some applaud, courtesies returned for a wet dreams gimmick. She leaves the podium and takes her seat. Can sex sell poetry? Yes. Only for the moment. <laughs> Watch. Competitiveness hum after 8 p.m. Feathered creatures flock to bars along 2nd Avenue. Peacocks in suits clean beer bottles sing karaoke off key. P. Fallon raised ten lines plays sexual pantomime. Robins and canaries wing it with penguin bartenders and flamingos sashay to the disco beat. The night brings them in, those sugar daddy owls and fast-talking hummingbirds and gossip monger parrots. Pigeons outnumber the exotics, and too many chickens and turkeys make the scene foul. In the corner, a sparrow sips, sips her merlot, thinks about scrambled eggs and flying solo. The wine gives her courage. But her wings are too stiff to make the move. This is for my birthday, I'm a Torian. For my birthday, I fired my breasts, my clitoris, my hormones, and a coquetry of my lips and eyes. Out of routine, I bleed once a month, wear makeup, perfume, trendy tops and leggings. Comb my long locks, keep the hem above my knees, but I have been severed from their sexual references. <laughs> I blow out the candles, watch my thoughts mingle with smoke. I used to make wishes, but plan to say, no, do not enter, leave me alone. Garbo had said it better. <laughs> Season, but I don't give a shit. Dog days of summer. These are the dog days of summer. It's time to go to work. Leave by half past eight and the tin can snake is late again. Doing its snails, waltz on rails. Play solitaire in your head. Waste time underground. Anticipate another day in hell. Reach a destination. Walk through a labyrinth sprayed by derelict's piss. The old toilet wakes you up faster than the gentrified caffeine in your upscale paper cup. Fade into the urban circus with the rest of the clones. Grilled shit and trash get the sidewalk's character, and the stench ain't much better. Cabs and bikes want to kill you. They need the money now, and... You're in the way. While robots armed with cell phones and briefcase bump into you because you don't exist. <laughs> the city has a fuck you attitude and the temperature is rising! Yeah. In the cubicle maze, Work for corporate rats and sit in your designated rut. Your Mickey Mouse title keeps your ass glued to your seat. Bosses send more emails and deadlines were yesterday. Brown bag lunches lack power to impress. Eat alone. Your phone and computer keep you company. Your salary's generous. The rent and bills thank you, yet there's no money for travel. You dream of summer love and the past still screws you and sex stinks like stale fish. <laughs> Your gender's a name only. Why do anything when you're anonymous like the flowers on your desk? 
watch the dry petals fall by the minute. And the clock says 6.30, and you're on overdrive. And the workload is tireless, and that report is overdue, and you almost forget to pee. <laughs> These are the dog days of summer. It's time to go home. Leave by half past nine, and a tin can snake is laid again. And the AC is out like the one at home. Your home sweet microwave. Your thoughts predict the future, playing solitaire with your body, wasting time on an empty bed, anticipating another night in hell. Wow. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Based on truth. You know it. Negativity. One, the boss. Don't be so negative. Your attitude is creating a hostile environment. Your coworkers feel uncomfortable. You never smile. Your demeanor is nasty. Whenever you speak on the phone, you lack business etiquette. People can hear you down the hall. If this keeps up, you'll be placed on a warning. Are you having trouble here at home? Therapy can help in times of crisis. You should seek professional help. HR can advise you on the appropriate agencies. Please make an appointment as soon as possible because... Two, the best friend. Why don't you smile more? A smile would make you look more beautiful and could take 10 years off your face. Think of it as painless cosmetic surgery. Plus, it'll, it would save you money for that trip to Barcelona with Thomas. Maybe you're suffering from negative overload. You need to release all that bad energy. Do things that will give you good karma. Think of it as an investment. You do believe in reincarnation. How about taking a yoga or meditation class? I know you're strapped for cash. But you can teach yourself how to breathe. That's right, breathe in and out. Slower now, slower. Girl, we need to talk. <laughs> Three, the accident. I wasted my Friday night at the Dublin Alehouse and left early. I was crossing the street at 23rd and Park when an SUV jumped to the curb. It missed me by inches. The inhabitants didn't notice me, nor did they slow down. I took the few breaths, inhaling, exhaling, my heart still on a marathon. The SUV disappeared downtown. I stood on the corner, alone with my negativity. <laughs> While watching the 11 p.m. news, the newcaster Newscaster reported that a 37-year-old man named John Saunders was killed in a hit-and-run accident in Soho. The culprit, a 45-year-old man named Thomas Bentley, and his accomplice, 40-year-old Jennifer Sands, were taken in for questioning. Thomas was driving intoxicated. Jennifer wouldn't have been much better behind the wheel. I had an epiphany. John Saunders was now my dead boss. Thomas Bentley was my ex-boyfriend. Jennifer Sands used to be my best friend. I opened the window and took a few deep breaths. I said to myself, I guess I'm doing okay with my negativity. <laughs> my eyes shut. A delicious chill caressed my body. I smiled and suddenly everything turned black. home dreamer. Macy sent me to a nursing home and I had to pee. Why was I sent here? I will never know. My room was huge and bland with two beds, a large sink, and two toilet partitions. I went into the first toilet, but the bowl was missing. I tried the one next to it, same situation as the first, except there was a tampon disposal receptacle. Great! I had my period, but I need to pee and take a crap. At the opposite end were the beds, one for me and the other for an older associate who used to work in the coat department. 
Her gray hair was neatly swept back with a headband. Still wearing a fine dress, pearls, and shoes, she sat regally on a bed, muttering in broken gibberish. She never asked why I apologized for what I was planning to do. I didn't think she even knew that I was her roommate. My bed, like my neighbor's, was covered in a dismal green and black bedspread with matching throw pillows. Unlike my neighbor's, I had one extra pillow. It was round, green, and encircled in black lace. Black stickered fat cats decorated the green background. I didn't want to ruin it and pushed it away from my makeshift circle of toilet paper. I had to get a cat thing in there. <laughs> Seconds later, I woke up. After a trip to my bathroom, I went back to sleep. But why on a sunny day did did water flood the gutters of Bensonhorst? Was it because of the nursing home dream? I will never know. <laughs> now, based on truth, Mr. Lipson, one of the reasons why I'm not an artist today. Mr. Lipson, you are a stone thrower, paint tosser, slasher, arsonist. You earned Matisse, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Da Vinci, or any great artist. You were a cantankerous old fart, a painter of happy trees against mediocre landscapes. You defaced two pieces of my artwork in Aunt Celia's and Uncle Henry Stuyvesant town living room as my parents sat without intervening. The pen and ink boat capsized on the fault finding. My lack of perspective, my lack of experience, even the lighthouse couldn't be saved. Your words deliberately smashed the day glow pink bottle, rotting the cheery flowers and fruit in and around the ceramic bowl. Too two-dimensional and amateurish, even the bowl cracked under pressure. Not one word of encouragement for an artist struggling with pimples and self-worth. <laughs> an artist simultaneously disappearing from a craft. The pictures were intended for Aunt Celia. She left space for them to hang on the family art wall. But instead, they went into a closet. A few years later, Aunt Celia handed them back to me. She said that they wouldn't fit in with her collection. But I saw that she made room for others. I didn't argue. Instead, I became a stone thrower, paint tosser, slasher, arsonist. I can never be Matisse, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Da Vinci, or any great artist. Nor could I become a cantankerous old bag, a painter of happy trees against mediocre landscapes. Remnants of the pen and ink boat and lighthouse and the day glow still life were unceremoniously donated to the Museum of Garbage. <laughs> Years later, I became a writer and poet, but I'm not Dickinson, Kerouac, Basho, Wolf, or any great writer or poet. Just someone who writes without pen, paint, or ink, wondering what would have happened if Mr. Lipson read my work. Beautiful. Beautiful. Christmas. One minute. Blame it on Eve. In God we trust. Speak American first. Your second language, Monsanto, not Spanish. Eat your death. GMOs landed on Coney Island. The GOP plants your parenthood and will abort subversives. Rosaries versus ovaries. The Bible never lies. If dicks can't rise, blame it on Eve. Your paychecks on a diet, unemployment gets fatter. If you fucked up your life, who gives a frack? Don't ever, don't ever complain. The taser will find you. The color of privilege hates stained sheets. Global warming, a liberal lie. Blame it on Eve. Spring is here. The air is dead. The earth pushes up cancer cells. Big Pharma is watching you. Fox News in denial. Washington War Games, Xbox, the spot. From school to senate, bullies rejoice, the internet explodes. As foreheads synchronize their iPhones, breathe in, breathe out, smell the rat shit. They never promised you a hipster garden. When chakras cross borders, exercise your inner trump. Good Christians say the end is clear. 
Blaming on Eve, the Bible never lies. Thank you. Oh.